I want to share his thread about the social credit system because you asked me about it. I summarized it, uh, but I did not. Uh, I did not go into great detail. So I want to go into great detail because it was asked in the AMA. So this is a great thread, I think, to help explain the social credit system. There's a lot of propaganda about this. So here he says some tweets uh, in order to uh, uh, kind of discredit the Black Mirror sort of sensationalist narrative about China's social credit system. So some background on why the system exists. In China, a FICO type system like what the U.S. has wouldn't be very useful as very few Chinese are debt holders. Most people don't take out loans for major purposes. They save instead. And I can attest to easily everybody I know in China and all the Americans and Westerners, I also know who live in China. They all say the same thing, that China is a extreme saving culture. Extreme. When I say extreme, I really do mean extreme. Uh, uh, people in China value saving money. Uh, more than anyone else I've met in any other part of the world. I mean, I haven't been to every part of the world, but where I have been, Turkey, Cuba, other places, it's it's just yeah. I've never seen. I've never met. I've never met a people a culture that this is so relevant to. He says probably more importantly, before the system existed, there wasn't a unified set of consequences for businesses who failed to pay fines, uphold agreements or generally hold ex to acceptable standards of conduct. Unless the offense was criminal, few punishments exist existed. So this context is helpful, but less relevant when it comes to reporting about the system in the Western press. You've seen headlines, Black Mirror is real, God help us all, etc. So what are the actual consequences for breaking the rules in the system? You can see for yourself. Here's the first list related to the investment in finance, to investment in finance. This set of punishments is clearly aimed at high income defaulters, to limit their market activity <laughs> spooky so this is a threat from 2018 and here you can see i don't know if this is how big that is for all of you I'll, no it's not really getting any bigger but basically it says restrictions on engaging in particular sectors or affairs establishing restrictions in financial companies ensure that information concerning persons subject to enforcement for trust breaking is a reference to due diligence during examination and approval for the establishment of banking and financial bodies or their branch bodies as well as share purchasing and the acquisition of so there's just these are just restrictions on issuing bonds restrictions on qualified investor status shareholder incentive restrictions restrictions on the issue of shares share quotations and transfer restrictions on establishment establishing social organizations so here you see that yeah this is not just i mean again as ian was saying there aren't many debt holders or shareholders in China. That's not a huge part of the population. These are for a particular group of people that do work in China. Um, and so it's all about restricting that work. It, really what that restriction means is protecting. And so he says some others include taking management positions in state-owned enterprises, becoming a civil servant, and joining the CPC. Defaulting on debt or defrauding customers would probably already come up in a routine background check for these positions anyway, but that's whatever, right? So here's the big one. The punishment that's grabbing all the headlines. Train and play tickets. What does the policy actually say? So here it says restrictions on riding trains and aircraft. Restrict persons subject to enforcement for trust breaking in legal representative. Main responsible persons. Actual controlling persons. As well as directly responsible persons. Influencing the performance of debt in persons subject to enforcement for trust breaking. From riding soft sleepers in trains. All C to G classified train sets. And all first class seats and other silver aircraft level. So trust breaking, right? That's a huge word here. And he goes on to say, if you're take if you're on the bad credit list, you can't buy first class plane tickets or luxury plane train tickets. You also can't engage in conspicuous consumption, travel, or send your kids to expensive private schools. Wow, it's just like that Netflix show. <laughs> so basically the social credit system is for those who are engaged in Fraudulent practices, especially around this kind of big business market activity, uh, trust breaking activity. I mean, we're talking about uh, uh, those who are um, who are really engaged in things that uh, you know are financially harmful to people. And so he says the most recent communiques on this policy were first issued 
were recently issued and offered a bit more detail. Uh, first, trains. So here you see, you know, the scope of the restrictions. So persons responsible for acts gravely influencing railway operational security and production security who are fined by public security bodies are determined as such by railway stations or train work unions. Those disrupting the operational order of railway train stations and endanger railway security results. In so here you have just like, this is just doing illegal things um, on trains. And then those investigated and persecuted for scalping rail tickets or producing and peddling counterfeit tickets. So this is just kind of standard uh, legal illegal activity. And then it goes on to say, uh, parties and major tax violations who have the capability to implement but do not implement the judgment. So these are basically people with money, right? So if you are in trouble around taxes and you have the money or you have the ability to meet the punishment and you do not do it, then yes, you get these restrictions. So again, you see over and over again how this is not Black Mirror. This is not Black Mirror. This... Um, <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. I'm going to put that up. Uh, make sure you support the Patreon, patreon.com slash Hanny So seriously, though, uh, think about this. This is all about punishing bad financial activity, things that really do harm people. So to sum up, the first set of violations is for specific rules related to train travel, like the issuing of fraudulent tickets or scalping. This is a unit <laughs> scalping. I have a Boston accent. Sorry. This is a universal ban from ticket purchases. The second list is a broader one, which carries the high class punishments we saw earlier. The broader list includes things you might accept, expect, like financial fraud or deception, but also includes not paying out social security or employing entities who don't. How terrible that they should be punished with a seat on a C or D class bullet train instead of a G class. A side note, C class and D class bullet trains are a little less fast than G class. They also cost less because they don't have two tiers of luxury seating. Not, no one I've seen reporting on this has bothered to point that dis distinction. So um, I'm just going to show all these people saying, join us on Patreon. Thank you so much. I really would appreciate that. Please do go to the Patreon, uh, become a monthly sustainer of this work. But back to the thread. So, but let's say someone breaks the rules in the first category and wants to get off the blacklist. How would they go about doing so? Here is how. So removal of restrictions, a uh, removal mechanism, specifically gravely untrustworthy, per untrustworthy persons will be appropriately barred from riding trains for a certain period. After a relevant subject is removed from the name list of persons barred from riding trains, they are no longer subject to restrictive measures from riding trains. The concrete removal method is as follows. Where a person is responsible for conduct gravely influencing railway operation security and production security as listed in clauses 1, 3 through 7 and 7, all railway operating enterprises will bar them from purchasing tickets for a period of 180 days to be calculated from the concluding date of the period of publication where there is no valid objection. After the 180 days, they are removed automatically and railway operation enterprises will restore ticket sales to them. When a person is responsible for conduct gravely influencing railway operational security and production security, as listed in clauses four through six, all railway transportation enterprises will bar them from purchasing a ticket where... The responsible person play, pays back the ticket fare they owe to be calculated from the day after upgrading the ticket. Railway operation enterprises will restore ticket sales to them where the responsible person acts in violation of clauses four through six for three times within a year after amending the first ticket fare they owed. And the responsible person pays back the fare they owe within 90 days. The railway operation uh, operations enterprise restores ticket sales. And so here you have just like, this is just standard fare here, right? If you're a scalper or a smoker or otherwise subject to criminal punishment, you're barred for the train for 180 days. In reality, it's doubtful a person caught smoking once will be put on the list. I imagine repeat offenders will be the only ones punished this way. So, you know, it's like for things that people do that just aren't legal on the trains, don't be selling counterfeit tickets. Don't be scalping tickets. Don't be smoking on the train when it's a non-smoking area, right? These are the punishments that come with them. It's, it's, it's not, this is not really crazy. If you're a false... If you use false documents to buy a ticket, ride without paying, your punishment is paying for your ticket. That's downright or will you? <laughs> so planes are a little different. The punishments are stricter, but so are the offenses. So here you have the social credit offenses. Uh, passengers carrying out the following acts in airports or aircraft who are subject to administrative punishment imposed by public security bodies or criminal liability. Fabricating and willfully disseminating false information about terrorism involving civil aviation or air defense security. Falsifying altering or illegally using another person's boarding identity document or boarding pass, blocking, forcibly occupying, or attacking check-in desk security. So, I mean, these aren't things that generally people would be doing that often, 
uh, I, at least I would hope, <laughs> you know, I would hope that a lot of people aren't trying to lie about a terrorist attack on a plane. I would hope that people aren't going to attack the workers over the kiosks and at the airport staff and workers, right? So, so these are just standard punishments. I mean, I don't, anyway, so in the list, we've got forcible boarding, fighting, fighting on the plane, lighting a fire, doing actual terrorism. These are dangerous things. The list of offenses from the train travel policy is the same for air travel, financial fraud, social security fraud, non-payment of fines concerning securities, white collar crimes, in other words. So the punishments for plane travel are as follows. For violations of the first specific list, a one-year ban. Remember, that's the theft for terrorism list. So this is really becoming very mundane to me. I don't know about you all, but I am not excited about reading this thread anymore because, I mean, these are things that we would expect really any society, no matter what, even no matter what mode of development, right? Even when you have socialist development, like in China, I mean, you do have to have laws. You have to protect if it's not if you're not protecting private property, then you do have to protect the society in some way. You, peop, not all behavior is allowable in order for a stable society to exist, even a socialist one. So again, why is white collar list subject to stricter punishment for air travel than train travel? It should be obvious that it's easier to flee the country on planes. The scope of offenses in this policy indicate it's intended for wealthy individuals as an incentive to get them to pay their debts and fines. Some media outlets have taken a couple of local systems and made Weasley link out to national policy. For example, Shanghai has tested out its own version of the system, which includes repeat offenses for things like jaywalking. Uh, Zhejiang province has done this with garbage sorting. The above examples haven't actually been implemented on a national level, though, and it's unclear if they ever will. I have my doubts as the deadline for the credit system to be implemented nationally is 2020 and the clock is ticking. So this is 2018. If the central government thought these local schemes were worth including, we'd have something heard something about it by now, by now, but we haven't. The link between jaywalking and national credit is, to put it obvious, to put it kindly, dubious. At the moment, those municipal offenses have a tiny five yuan or roughly seventy-five cent fine. That's it. But if you report that and report it on the social credit system in the same story, you apply a relationship that isn't really there. It's speculative. It's irresponsible reporting. In short, it's not Black Mirror. You dweebs, watch a new show. <laughs> So that's it. I mean, basically when you have social credit, it's it's really more about speculative behavior, those who owe massive debts, those who are tax evading, tax fraud, and then those who are committing pretty serious crimes, right? Train, transportation, planes. I mean, this is just standard fare, standard legal kind of um law like the restrictions that you would expect a society that's trying to develop that's trying to protect its interests would have in any level of, of development right because no matter what if it's socialist or capitalist their interests to be protected and it's quite obvious that these set of fines are not there to protect the private property of let's say capital because a lot of this is geared toward those who may be engaging in certain activities in and around capital that are harmful, right? Are harmful to the state, harmful to the society, tax evading, uh, 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 right? Allow it not paying back debts, um, that sort of thing. And so uh, I think it's really important to, um, to look at this, you know, and to understand it.